Hi there, today I thought I'd do a little bit of a sketchbook tour. I recently completed March of Robots in March and I completed it in about 10 days but I haven't looked at it since so I thought we could just have a look through and see my thoughts now that everything's completed. I did this title page in watercolour and I was going to tidy it up a little bit but I do quite like the messy look and I think the colours are so pretty. Didn't quite go as planned though, it's a little bit patchy. Then I've got all of the prompts listed out, I've really enjoyed doing this, I managed to get them all right, every single time I do it I'm scared that I'm going to mess it up. I didn't get to use all of the modifiers and I did mess up a little bit there, but I don't think it's, I don't think you can tell very much. Beginning the challenge now, the first prompt was heart and I decided to do like the Tin Man from Wizard of Oz but in my own kind of take, I wanted to do a really simple style and I'm quite happy with how it turned out. The next prompt is connect and I couldn't really think of anything for this one, it strayed a lot from the first design but I felt like some of my robots were looking quite similar in the sketch stage. So I decided to do a bit of a round modern kind of robot and he's like a little robot postman, he's quite cute I think. The third prompt is Lost and I decided to do an explorer for this one. The background is very simple but I wanted to start adding backgrounds but keeping them quite simple because I didn't want these to take too long really. It's such a small sketchbook too. The fourth prompt is Key and I decided to use the orange modifier for this one. It was probably a bit closer to red than orange but I do really like how this one turned out. I used colour pencil and I think it's such a cute style. Number five is Beacon. I had the idea literally from the second I saw Beacon to do a lighthouse where the actual light is a bit more like Sauron's eye and I think it strayed quite a bit from the original sketch. I do quite like how it turned out though but these rocks were supposed to be feet and they don't really look like feet now. I don't know if you can tell that's kind of what I was going for on this one. Number six is Shadow. I used ink for this one and I did Basically it was obviously white, black was pure ink and then I did a light grey and a dark grey, that's all I did. So I did like a free tone piece and I had them all in like separate bottles. And it was actually really easy to do this one, once I've done the planning it was really easy and I had a lot of fun with this one. Number seven is Moon. This is one of my favourites. This is a mixed media piece. I used watercolour and gouache for the background. I used metallic gel pen for this bit and I used fine liner around the edges. I also used a bit of gold gel pen there, but that one didn't really work. Might have been a marker actually, that might be why. It originally was supposed to just be an astronaut and then I turned it into a bit of a frog. And that was originally the kind of pose, but that looked a bit too similar to something, so I ended up going for this one instead. Number eight is build. I used gouache for the first time in this challenge for this one, and I used my Winsor & Newton dried gouache. It did stray a little bit from what the original was supposed to be, but I like the idea of it being a mole in a hard hat. I think the hat's a bit wonky actually. And I really love this kind of matte effect that gouache gives. I do think it's really quite cool. The background I did in one layer, and I do really like the background too. Next, number nine is float, and I used a red modifier for this one. Although it's technically a little bit orange and pink as well. I don't really know how the modifiers are supposed to work, but I tried. I wanted to go for like a little cute teddy bear kind of floating robot, just really, really cute. And I think the gouache worked so well in this instance. I do really love this pink shade in the background as well, to be honest. But I guess light red is pink, so it's still red. Number 10 is Bright. I really love how this one turned out. It didn't go to plan. Originally I was going to use watercolour but I had my gouache out and it was just a lot easier to use gouache, you know. The water, I had the brushes, I had everything ready for gouache. The buildings use wet on wet and I really love this effect. Gouache does this thing where it kind of spreads out and goes all like spiky. I don't know if that makes sense. Whereas watercolour does these blooms and it flows. Gouache is very like, it doesn't spread very far but it goes into like a flower kind of spiky effect. The buildings are my favourite bit but I think the background and the robot, it does just kind of go and I do like the little light bulb head. But it was originally supposed to be watercolour and like a lot of glazing. Number 11 is Crystal. I used my gouache again and 
Yeah, it was supposed to be like a crystal unicorn. I got a bit confused trying to do like a horse. Their legs kind of bend in such a weird way. And you can see it was originally supposed to bend like a horse. And then I just kind of did, um, I don't know, like a dog. <laughs> and I tried to save it a little bit, but it was really difficult. And yeah, it doesn't, you just kind of ignore that bit. That bit's quite cool. Number 12 is Mission and I used a black modifier here. I only used colour pencil for this and I never used colour pencil. Originally I wanted to do a spy just kind of standing there and then I thought like I need to have more dynamic poses, I can't just draw a robot standing there for the entire challenge. So I used colour pencil and I used fine liner for the darker bits and I kind of like the idea for this one but it being colour pencil just didn't really work, but I didn't know what medium I wanted to start on that day, so I just decided to use colour pencil. It's a good time to explore doing challenges. Number 13 is Rocket. I think this one is such a cute design. I really like this bit here where it's kind of kind of blended, kind of not. I think the background's quite cute, and I do like the little metallic stars with the gel pen. That's something that like I never do. I do really like it. I think it's a cute design. Also, I just used the colours that I wanted to really, and I, that's probably partly why I like it so much. Number 14 chamber and the modifier was green i feel like choosing the green modifier on this one really limited me actually and it would have turned out a lot better if i could use different colors number 15 is space i had the idea of doing a bee in space so first i did the bumblebees that we kind of get in britain what i thought they looked like that didn't work so then i did one that's a bit more looks a bit more like a wasp and then i settled for something in the middle of that because bees are cute and wasps are not but because I'd already done moon with a space background where is it there I kind of changed my mind it was supposed to be a galaxy background I thought like I can't really do another one and also because the bee has like really dark areas on it it would just kind of blend to the background so unfortunately I had to do a blue sky and then it doesn't look like space at all but yeah, I kind of like how the wings are sort of looking a bit robotic though. Number 16 is Planet, and I did like a UFO kind of robot. Um, the background didn't really go to plan. I actually put tons of watercolour down and then I sprayed it with water and you can see there's just these kind of weird flakes. It, it's, always, um, it's always a bit of a random move that and you don't know exactly what's going to happen when you spray it with water but I've never really had this before where it's fully separated. But I think it definitely could have been done better. Maybe some stars would make it better. Number 17 is Element. I knew that I wanted to do a cyborg at some point during this challenge and it was kind of at this point that I was like, you know, let's just do it. I, this was the one that I'd come up with the idea for right at the very end. Like, I had no ideas really for this one. My first idea was to do like the four elements joined together, but I think this one worked a lot better. I think it does kind of look like a cyborg, but I used watercolour for this one and layered quite a lot and it actually went surprisingly well considering. Number 18 is Grow. I used my gouache for this one and I really love how the little fish tanks turned out and I do quite like a lot of the green kind of plants but I do think the background isn't great and maybe something like a opaque pastel pink or something would have been better rather than this kind of grey translucent bit. And then the actual robot just isn't opaque enough. You can kind of see the paper through some of the areas but I was really struggling to get it opaque and waiting for it to dry as well number 19 is lines and i decided to do like this really thin robot that was created from i don't know what it's created from mine kind of looks like really small pieces of wood but <laughs> created from something and it ended up being a little bit bigger than it was supposed to be originally but it was really difficult in gouache to get these lines and then to actually outline it in gouache too. I wanted to do something a bit more immersive so it was kind of like on a zip line and it's an interesting idea I think but I do think there's not enough contrast in the actual piece. I use my Tombow markers here as well. Number 20 is map and for this one I originally started with something that looks nothing like a robot but towards the end I think it actually does look quite like a robot so I'm really happy with how this one turned out. The background is like a thin layer of gouache but everything else is a zebra mild liner 
They're usually used for bullet journaling, so it's quite interesting to use it in this form and try and draw with them. I really like it. It was quite difficult though with using like a highlighter and trying to make the lines accurate. But yeah, it's a bird holding a treasure map. 21 is object. I wanted to do a really simple idea for this. I wanted to do a simple fine liner piece and then just add a load of watercolour and water to it. And this is what I came up with. It was supposed to be a lot taller, but I ran out of space, so it's a bit shrunk. But it's supposed to be like a kind of city in a snow globe. And, you know, the prompt is object. You can do any object, really. And I turned it into like a bit of a robot, like a walking snow globe. The whole colour thing is just something fun I like to do. Number 22 is Bloom, and this one doesn't look so much like a robot, but I really wanted to do this one. It was one of my first ideas. Originally, it started a bit more kind of elf-like, and then I ended up with this one. I really love how it turned out. I love how opaque a lot of the gouache is. This one was my Mia Himi jelly gouache, so it's a bit more opaque than the other gouache. But I do really like how this one turned out. I love the colour theme as well. I think the mint green with the purple goes really well. It's just kind of like an elf robot. Number 23 is Tome. And my biggest regret with Tome is honestly doing the gouache so thick that the page is sticking to it. There's not really much I can do now about that, but it's really unfortunate. I was using the gouache quite thick because I was like dry brushing it to try and create these books and originally I was going to do colour pencil over the top and kind of number the books and like put words on and stuff but I just didn't think it needed to have that much time spent on it to be honest so I left it like this and I do quite like the simplicity of it, it's just like a robot librarian. I feel like I've seen this kind of shape before but I can't think of where but yeah it's like a robot librarian. Number 24 is Reflect. This one did not go to plan. The background unfortunately ended up kind of similar to the grow one. It was just what I had left on my palette and it was really messy. I would have liked it to be a lot lighter than it ended up but obviously it dried darker because it's gouache. I wanted to use my metallic watercolours and the silver I do actually really like. At the time I didn't think it was very opaque but I do quite like it now. And this guy is just a little bit random, but I wanted to do like a monster robot and the idea was it had like suckers on its hands like you see in Monsters Inc and it was kind of cleaning the windows using its suckers. Number 25 is tools and for this one I wanted to do a robot that was made up of a load of tools so I put down some stuff together. I knew I wanted to do like a hammer, I quite like the idea of a plunger as well. So I just sort of collected a load of tools and this is what I came up with. I think the biggest problem with it is it's so dark. I think I should have done like some more highlights on it. I quite like how gritty it looks though in some ways and I do quite like the background. This is all just dry brushing. Number 26 is Cloud. I don't know if you can tell that I didn't have much of an idea. I wanted to do a plane and the wings were clouds. A bit like a sway blue from Pokemon. That was kind of what I was going for. The face was a last minute decision and it didn't go to plan. It was supposed to be a lot more pastel-y and I think I kind of wanted to do it in watercolour but the idea was basically just a plane and the wings were clouds. 27 is remote. I was kind of inspired by that short film Lava and I was thinking of doing like a remote island and putting eyes on it and just turning it into a bit of a person but I don't think it looks like a robot. Number 28 is Lance. I actually preferred this sketch to this one which is really unfortunate. I did the horse really quite tall and at that point there wasn't really much I could do so I had to make the guy like really like tiny compared to the horse but yeah I just sort of did a lance and the guy looks tiny but it's supposed to be like a little knight really. I didn't realise that I had spread like that but that's unfortunate. 29 is Hammer. I wanted to do steampunk for this one. That's kind of all I had in mind. <laughs> I actually forgot to add... The, um, the gears and the cogs and that on the hat, looking at it now, that's unfortunate. I was supposed to do like this on the hat, what was that one for? Maybe that was like the sleeve, maybe that was the sleeves, it was supposed to be like that. This was supposed to have a lot more to it. I really like steampunk and I would like to do more like it, but yeah, this one definitely was rushed. 30. Let's skip over this. It went wrong. The page is so heavy because of how many layers of paints on it, but 
Yeah, it, it's a frog, a robot frog. 31 is Dream. I think this might be one of my favourites. I think the actual watercolour is lacking a lot of contrast, but considering the original was doing like an actual person, I think I did a really good job trying to make it look like a robot instead. And I wanted to do a robot fairy. I knew that was one of the ones that I wanted to do and it just sort of slipped in for Dream. I was like, right, this is the one I'm going to do a fairy on a toadstool. That was my idea. It's just lacking contrast. It just needs like another one or two layers of watercolour, I think, really. But I do really like how it turned out. That is the end. I don't usually do an end page, but I had a load of ink left on my brush and I just decided to do something to use it up. Thank you so much for watching my March of Robots journey. It's my first time doing a March of Robots challenge. This sketchbook is huge and it's only half finished. Please let me know in the comments down below which one was your favourite. Like and subscribe if you've enjoyed watching this one. And the next time I see you will be my mermaid art challenge. Bye bye.